But there was one moment this past year that displayed it like nothing else, and I'm just going to end on this, and that was Coach C. Vivian Stringer and the women of Rutgers basketball. Damn. Yeah. Just, just absolutely smacking down serial bigot Don Imus. I mean, Imus thought it would be all giggles and grins to call the Rutgers women nappy-headed hoes. And he thought wrong. And now he has joined Donald Rumsfeld, Paul Wolfowitz, and Rick Santorum on just the scrap heap of this past year. And, you know, afterwards, the media scratched their heads and they were asking, well, why is Imus out of a job? And I did some shows where people were like, why is Imus out of a job? We don't understand. Why is he out of a job? What did he do that was so terrible? Why is he out of a job? And it's just like, you know, this isn't that hard. It's not that hard to figure out. One, he is a serial bigot, and this was exposed when he said that. I mean, he called African-American journalist Gwen Ifill a cleaning lady. He called New York Times sports writer Bill Roden, who's a hero of mine, a quota hire. He told 60 Minutes that he hired his producer because he knows all the good N-word jokes. He called Arabs ragheads. His co-host Sid Rosenberg called Palestinians stinking animals and said we should drop a bomb and kill them all right now. I mean, this man was a bigot and he is gone because people are sick and tired of this kind of bullshit going out over our airwaves. But. And that's one reason why he's gone, but he's also gone because this time he did something a little different, and that's he cross-pollinated his bigotry with sports. I mean, remember that Rush Limbaugh got the biggest backlash of his whole miserable, rotten, sclerotic, satanic career when he said that the media overhyped Philadelphia Eagles football star Donovan McNabb because of their quote-unquote social concern to see a successful African-American quarterback. And after thousands of angry calls and emails, Rush Limbaugh was fired from ESPN. But it also immediately, yeah, that was great, that was great, but it also raised the question, which is what the hell was Rush Limbaugh doing getting hired by ESPN? Now, either OxyContin was getting passed around in a really happy way in the executive offices there, little hillbilly heroin for Rush and the executive gang, or it exposed how right-wing politics are promoted in sports while resistance politics are marginalized. But it's also not hard to understand why Imus and Rush reap the whirlwind, because we're relentlessly sold this ridiculous idea that our games are safe space from this kind of political swill. We are also sold this idea, and this relates directly to what Anthony was talking about, that sports are somehow this field of dreams, a magic meritocracy where hard work always meet, meets rewards. But when that playing field is shown to be unequal, it stings. When you have a Rutgers team that defied the odds and made the NCAA finals and gets called these horrible words for their trouble, it presses an all too raw nerve. I would argue that nerve is particularly raw for women athletes. Millions of women play sports. Millions of women are part of the sports world, yet they also face the worst kinds of sexist attitudes for daring to do it, the worst kinds of homophobia. And this is especially the case for women basketball players. And this is why so many people, women who play sports, women who know people who play sports, men who might have a relative that plays sports, men who have little two-year-old daughters and you hope they grow up to play sports, all looked at Don Imus and said, you need to go. Enough is enough. We're not going to put up with this anymore. But at the end of the day, and this I just want to leave you with this, we have to understand that Imus reaped the whirlwind because Coach Stringer and the Rutgers team refused, like so many of his targets, to be silent. That's the number one lesson in this. And on Keith Olbermann's show, she absolutely let loose. And I want to read a little section of what she said. She said, too often politicians and religious leaders speak for us. And we sit back and don't realize the power in numbers and when to say enough is enough. We see injustice all the time. A kid that steals something with a plastic cap pistol and spends 10 years in jail. And yet you see the white collar thieves that steal millions of dollars get off. And I do think that if people stood up, politicians wouldn't wait for a poll, but would be strong enough to make a decision and stand. I've coached for 36 years as a person of conscience, and I would gladly exchange winning a national championship if we would stand and allow the country to somehow be empowered and that we take our country back. Now, it is the last part. It is the last part. 
It is the last part of that that I love so much where she says, I would gladly exchange winning a national championship. Because it's a great statement. It's like, okay, Imus, you want to cross-pollinate sports with bigotry? Well, I'm going to splice it with justice. And that's absolutely right. Because taking our country back, what it means is building spheres of resistance in every aspect of our society, even in the world of sports. That's the example of Anthony Pryor. That is the legacy that continues to this day of Dr. John Carlos. And building that kind of resistance is the best hope, not only for sports, but also for the future of humanity. Thank you very much. <laughs>